Hello, my name is Steve and welcome to my video where I am going to compare the features of various tabletop baseball simulation games. So um, the purpose is really uh, to compare features, not on a tutorial basis, but just more about game design and uh, statistical accuracy. So that's, that's the angle that I'm gonna uh, focus on. I've always been a bit of a math guy and uh, that'll probably come through as we go through the video. So uh, from the outline uh, that you might see in the, in the screen here, I'm gonna do a high level review of the features of three games. One is Stratomatic, which if you're watching this, you probably know Stratomatic well. Uh, my own game, which I am referring to as Vintage Baseball, and then Status Pro, uh, the third edition of Status Pro which a couple months ago I became familiar with and have taken a deep dive on. And then uh, once we've gone through the high level of the features, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the features. And then I'm gonna share some of my perspectives on the statistical accuracy of these games. And then while I've been working on this project, uh, I became familiar with two other games, Payoff Pitch Baseball and uh, Sports Illustrated Baseball from the early 70s. And so I'm going to actually spend some time at the end of this video talking about those two games as well. Um, so just as a little bit of background, uh, my foray into tabletop baseball goes back about 45 years. Uh, I was a mid-teenager, I guess I would say. I don't know what prompted it, but I created my own dice-only baseball game. Uh, so it was pretty generic. Uh, there were no player uh, cards. Uh, the only difference was that pitchers had their own uh, pitching, or I'm sorry, hitting rules. And um, so, yeah, so that uh, was written down on a sheet of tablet paper, uh, the rules were. And um, we had many hours making up teams and, and, and rolling dice a lot. Um, the key feature of that game I'm going to show you here is in the flow. So, you can kind of see in this diagram, it had balls and strikes. So that was always the first step. You kept rolling until you either had a walk, a strikeout, or uh, the ball was put in play, which I, I referred to at that time as contact. And then there was a second step, which you determined if the batter was safe or out. And if he was safe, you rolled again to see if it was uh, you know, a single of multiple types, a double, a triple, or home run. And if it was an out, uh, you determined if it was a ground ball or fly ball, and you might have a double play or, or sacrifice fly. So very simple. Uh, I did a separate YouTube video on that, so um, you can feel free to check that out. I'm not going to talk any more about that game at this time. So, um, you know, when I think about, about these games and how they're designed, um, there's really some trade-offs that have to be managed. And uh, this is a little model that I came up with to think about that. And, um, you know, the first is complexity. How complex is the game going to be? Uh, and that's very closely related to, um, you know, how statistically accurate the game is. And it may be somewhat related to uh, the realism of the game. Um, statistical ac accuracy is important to a lot of people. Uh, it's somewhat important to me. I like to know at least there was a reasonable attempt at, at, at the game being designed with statistical accuracy in mind. Um, but then there's just a question of realism, which can just inf influence how fun the game is and, and whether there's any nostalgia that's uh, stirred up by playing. I think the other important factor is the ease of play or the flow. And all games are a little bit different in that context and a lot of times driven by the complexity and the statistical accuracy. So um, with that, I think we're gonna jump ahead to, um, to the disclaimers. So this video is intended to fill a gap uh, out there by taking a look at uh, a few of these games from a slightly different perspective. Again, the main design, uh, main focus here is on game design and statistical accuracy. And my observations are probably influenced 
by the fact that I only do solo play. Uh, this isn't intended to be a tu tutorial, as I said. Uh, there's a ton of good videos out there that explain the details of how these games work, and there's lots of interesting replay videos, which I've spent a lot of time watching. Probably most importantly is this is not a criticism of any particular game. However, I'm going to share some of my own observations and opinions along the way. I do encourage comments because that's how we can learn from each other. So let's uh, start off with uh, Stratomatic, but uh, maybe before we do, you see here on the, on the page, this was my original game, which um, in the last summer I converted the rules from, from uh, just a sheet of tablet paper to actual charts. And the charts are available to you from me for free in PDF if, if you're at all interested, just, just uh, reach out to me. Okay, Stratomatic. So, um, again, I'm sure most people are familiar with Stratomatic. Basically, you start off with, with these player cards. Um, one, from, one for the batter. Sorry about, about the shadow there. One for the batter and one for the pitcher. So um, you use, uh, to start off, you use three dice. So you start off with, you know, one, one dice of one color and two of another. You roll all three at the same time. The one, two, three on the, on the red dice here would put you to the batter card and four, five, six would put you to the pitcher card. And uh, then you, the other two dice, you, you actually add up and you look up the result in the correct column of the card. Um, so uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and so um, the, the cards that I've, I've shown you here, they are for the so-called basic game. And uh, subsequently, Stratomatic came out with uh, cards that were called advanced, which I'm gonna show you. And then that's what I'm gonna focus on here. And then they also came out with some additional complexities uh, in their version called super advanced. So one of the key things about the advanced version is that they've introduced the concept of left hand and right hand splits. So here you have Manny Sanguian from the 1971 Pirates. And um, you can see his, his results. Um, customized for uh, the type of pitcher that was playing. And um, one interesting little thing is it's not on every card, but he actually has a hit by pitch uh, result on his card. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of batters do not. Um, Manny Sanguian uh, hardly ever struck out. He hardly ever took a walk. So you don't see many, if any, strikeouts or walks on his card. But again, it's all, it's all customized. And then the same thing with, with, with the pitcher. Um, it's pretty much all customized. So uh, a couple points here. Um, be, this is kind of the most classic format here. It's called a 50-50 game. So half the results come off the batter card, half of them come off the pitcher card. And many, many games are designed that way. Um, not always the most popular, not always the most interesting. Uh, and, and with Stratomatic, there is almost no interaction between the batter card and the pitcher card once you've rolled, you know, the first dice, the red dice in my example. Uh, there is one exception in the advanced game, and you can kind of see it, see it here, is Manny Sanguian has a power rating, and it's either normal or weak. And as I understand it, um, there are certain rolls on the on the pitcher card where, um, depending on whether the batter is normal or weak, uh, influences whether, whether it's a home run or not. So there is a little bit of interaction there. You know, in terms of statistical accuracy, I think Stratomatic uh, prides itself on its statistical accuracy. I know they have a, a team of researchers that, um, you know, work on the cards every year they, um, I've, I've read a lot about uh, the formulas used to create the cards, and, and these have been developed by, or not, not 
released publicly by the company, but but there's another gentleman in particular who who has um, evaluated those uh, those formulas and and pretty much uh, came up with a way to replicate these cards and and so on. Um, so the math holds together is really really the point. I think the other point is any time you have a game with three dice, um, there's 216 possibilities uh, created by these three dice. Uh, so in this case of Stratomatic, there's 108 possibilities on the batter card and 108 on the pitcher card. Now Stratomatic went one further uh, in order to get more, more precision, more statistical precision. And you can see, as, as for example, on the right-hand side of this card, and I'm sorry about that it's uh, a little hard to read, but on the right-hand side of this card, um, you can see there's what's called splits. So for certain results, um, the, the result is kind of split. And so what you do is you roll a 20-sided dice, and then that splits the result into one, one outcome or another. So maybe it's a double with one roll and a triple with another roll or home run or a double with, with another roll. Originally, those were uh, a deck of uh, cards numbered 1 to, one to 20, uh, and you, you pulled, pulled a card out of the deck, and that's how you split the result. So really, with, this, with the 20-sided dice edition, instead of the 216 results, you actually have potentially over 4,000 unique results that you could create. So uh, arguably, that, that's, you know a good feature in terms of statistical accuracy. One of the things I like about Stratomatic is that most of the outcomes and results come right off the card. Uh, obviously, you do have to refer to some charts, and I'm not going to go into that here, but mo most of the results are right there on the card. And um, it has all the features of, of a normal game you would expect with stealing ratings and bunting ratings and hit and run ratings and uh, running speed rating for, for uh, taking extra bases and so on. And then um, it also has a system of um, what we'll call pitcher endurance or tiredness. And so once a pitcher reaches a certain inning, like in this case, Doc Ellis, once he reaches the seventh inning um, and starts giving up hits and walks, um, and then he's potentially tired. And then his results start getting uh, penalized and, and so on. So that's a very, very quick uh, review of Stratomatic. Now I'm gonna go on to my game, uh, which as I said, is, is kind of based on, on Stratomatic in some ways. Um, first things first, uh, again, three dice, but in this case, I, I have them different colors and I read them red, white, and blue. So, you know, for this example in my in my hand, this would be two twenty three would be the would be the result so in in theory that that gives me a little bit more accuracy if you will in in designing these these uh, cards and charts i 'm going to pull up some of the cards here and explain some of the basics of the game so here we have uh, Jim Palmer this is a card I created probably forty years ago or more. And one of the things you can see is that both for pitchers and batters, um, I actually have um, a rating assigned to them for walks and for strikeouts. And you'll see this on the chart in the, in the background in a second. Um, so similarly, here's Willie Sargil. Um, he uh, has a D walk rating, which means his walks are pretty much average but his strikeouts are awful, so he has a triple triple H rating. And so uh, basically the, what happens is, is in terms of the flow of play, you, you roll the red, white, and blue dice. Um, the red determines which column you go to for batter walks or batter strikeouts, pitcher walks, pitcher strikeouts. And if you don't end up with a walk or a strikeout, then you move on to the next step, which is the safe out chart, which requires you to do a little math uh, and roll the dice again. And then if it's out and out, 
you you go and and go to this this fielding chart. So um, pretty straightforward, but um, could you could have a lot of extra dice rolls compared to other games. So if there's a hit, you actually take the batter's card and turn it over and roll again. And there's all kinds of different results that you can get, different types of singles and doubles or triple or even a home run. Now, somewhat similar to Stratomatic, there is a little bit of pitcher-batter interaction. And mainly, it comes in the form of, uh, again, home runs. And in this case, sometimes the, pit, the pitcher influences it, but sometimes the, the pitcher, if he doesn't give up a lot of home runs, as you can see at the bottom here, um, the home run can turn into a double. And conversely, uh, sometimes a double can turn into a home run, but the, the pitcher determines that. The only other interaction is on the chart in the background there, where if there is a an extreme situation, um, you know, where a pitcher strikes out a whole lot of batters, sometimes uh, he'll take away strikeout, I'm sorry, add a lot of strikeout options to to the batter strikeouts, and, and the opposite can work if, if there's a, a batter that doesn't walk very much, um, he may, um, you know, he may influence um, the pitcher walks or the or sim similar with the strikeouts. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's kind of how you deal with some of the extremes. Um, I did most of this work initially when I was a teenager, late teenager, mm -hmm. by hand with a calculator. Although when I did get to college, I wrote a computer program to actually generate some of these cards. Here's somebody from the 1962 Mets. Um, and here's a batter. And it even generated the, the back of the card. So um, kind, of, kind of interesting. Uh, it saved, saved a little bit of work. One of the things I learned um, this, this summer was that compared to 40 years ago, there's a lot more data available. So I use baseballreference.com. But... Um, Prior to this, I had a little bit of uh, I'll call handedness or left hand right hand split action going on, which was, you know, once the the ball was in play, you had to determine uh, the likelihood of him getting a hit, which you can see at the top of Willie Stargell's card here, and then the pitcher adjusted that likelihood. So um, what I did originally is uh, depending on whether the pitcher was facing a right-hand batter or left-hand batter, I would deduct a certain number of, of um, percentage points from, from the likelihood of getting a hit. What I learned uh, this summer is that there's a lot of data available, and so I ended up customizing the entirety of the pitcher card, uh, both walk ratings and strikeout ratings and the, the hit adjustment rating, and so I started creating card it looked more like more like this um, one thing I learned is that while there's a standard convention that if you know the same handed pitcher and batter are facing each other like a right-handed pitcher right-hand batter that that you know is going to you know hurt the batter and you know the, the opposite is true but in reality every situation is different it could be completely opposite or it could be just as you expect for, say, walks and strikeouts, but opposite for hits, or, or it could be all all over the place. Um, you see a little bit of that here with Steve Blass, where uh, he really has a hard time striking out left-hand batters, um, but actually did a slightly better job about not walking walking them. And this, again, is 1971. Um, just one little last thing is is I actually since since I um, created those original cards I've started creating a ni nicer looking ones uh, and so that's what that, that's what you see here um, with uh, with these cards. Not to belabor the point, but one issue you can have with my approach here is that some pitchers may strike out or walk more people more on a percentage basis than what the ratings uh, originally contemplated and so i started creating some customized cards 
And as you can see, you just read the dice roll directly off the card instead of the chart in the background. And at this point, it starts to look a lot like um, Stratomatic. So there will probably be no more further improvements to my game now that I've adjusted all the pitchers um, uh, and batters uh, that, that needed adjusting for this purpose. The only other thing I was going to mention is, and it applies to all games, is I also discovered that intentional walk data is available. And so I went back and corrected all my cards um, to exclude the impact of intentional walks, which makes it slightly more, more accurate. Uh, I don't know that all games do that. I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So um, I think that's all I wanted to cover about my game. And so we'll go on to, uh, to Status Pro. Um, so I have, have some charts here I'm going to take us through. And uh, bear with me. Uh, I think... If I, had, if I had known or owned Status Pro from the beginning, uh, back in the day, this would have been a great sentimental favorite. I would have played this for hours. Uh, I, am, I am certain of it. Um, I just wasn't aware of it back then. Um, and my family may, may not have even had the money to, to, to buy it. Um, Important thing about Status Pro before we start is there's a lot of versions out there. And this is kind of the common rendition of the major versions, but um, this game actually was branded differently in the 70s when it first came out. But anything pre-88, I think, often is known as the second edition. Uh, then from 1988 onward, there's a, the third edition, which is the, the edition I'm going to talk about. Um, and then, uh, apparently there were some kind of advanced rules for the third edition. Uh, I'm really not familiar with that. Um, but what is most common out there now is something called Status Pro Advanced, which, um, Derek Breckner came up with, along with probably some input from some other people. Um, you can talk, you can find a lot about the history of Status Pro just by uh, looking it up on Wikipedia, and I would encourage you to do that. Just, it's just very interesting, uh, I think. And then YouTube videos are, are a great resource, uh, both on how to play. There's even a video on, on how uh, to make your own versions of the original cards. So that's, that's Status Pro versions. Um, so I'm going to show you briefly a couple of Status Pro cards, and bear with me here. Um, so this is a Status Pro batter card. It's actually one that I created myself. Uh, I've spent the last couple of months creating spreadsheets uh, that will generate Status Pro cards. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd that way. They have all the normal things you would, you would expect. Again, hit and run ratings, sacrifice ratings, stealing ratings, injury ratings. Um, couple other ratings that I'm going to talk about, a separate running rating from, from the steel rating. And then you can see um, that there are results, singles, doubles, triples, home runs, and so on, um, on the batter's card. Uh, one interesting thing is that the hit batsmen only occur on the batter card, uh, not on the pitcher cards. Um, so... That's a, that's a sample batter card. And now we get into some of the uniqueness here. Here's a sample pitcher card, which is uh, Shohei Otani from uh, 2022. Uh, had obviously a good year, uh, 15 and nine with a 2.33 ERA. Uh, one of the things you notice here where my thumb is that there are only singles on the pitcher card, uh, but he also has strikeouts and walks. And then the pitcher card is where you would generate a potential pass ball or, or wild pitch. Uh, the, the most interesting part of these cards, I think, is at the top, though. And there's this PB rating. It it's really governs the pitcher-batter interaction. And so, essentially, uh, if you think about the second digit there, the eight, um, 
anything, if you imagine rolling uh, a dice between, um, uh, you know, the normal two six-sided dices, uh, and you can get a result between two and 12. Well, if the result is between two and eight on his card, then you um, roll again or check again and, and see the result from the pitcher card. Whereas if he wasn't as good of a pitcher, he might have like a 2-5 rating. So only results in the 2 to 5 range would result in the pitcher card. If, it, if the pitcher card doesn't apply, then, you know, you pull up the batter card and you determine the outcome, the outcome there. So it's, it's a departure from the classic 50-50 uh, model um, that we saw with Stratomatic and, and the other game. Uh, it makes it extremely interesting, I think, uh, to play. Now, before I'm going to go on to the chart, I just want to show you something here. So this game was designed with what, what are known as fast action cards. And I'm sorry if this doesn't show up very well, but it's actually, there are actually four individual fast action cards on one piece of cardboard here. But you can see you would pick up a card and in the upper left, the first thing you would check is that PB rating. If it was a three, most likely you're gonna check the, the pitcher card. You would pull up another card and on that card would be a random number, which is 71 here. Again, I apologize with the, with the uh, focus. But anyways, it's a 71. And then so from the 71, you would pull up the pitcher card and a 71 would be an out. Then you would pull up another fast action card since it was an out and you would determine uh, what type of out it is on the lower left hand corner here. Now it may then end up sending you to, to an actual fielding chart if you will and there are a bunch of them depending on how many men are on base and how many types of outs there are. Um, a reasonably slick feature of the game. Um, so with, with that brief introduction to Status Pro, uh, I made some observations here. So as I said before, the pitcher-batter interaction is unique. It's not 50-50, and the more dominant pitchers will control most of the action. Uh, and that's important because all the extra base hits are on the hitter's cards. Um, Status Pro also has a pretty unique approach to pitcher endurance. And so if you're a starter, you're going to have a number ranging somewhere between 10 and 15 usually. And so every time there's a hit, a walk, a hits batsman, or a run scored, you'll reduce that number. And then once it becomes zero, the pitcher is tired. Now in the original game, um, the tiredness basically, I think, made all the results come off the batter's card, which is pretty punitive. Um, more modern house rules and the advanced game actually just reduce that PB number by one every batter that's faced. So eventually you're, you're going to get to the point if you leave them in that, um, you know, that you're going to get a lot of results off the, the batter card. Um, we already talked about the fast action cards, although there are dice versions for the game. What I do is kind of a mix is is I'll typically use the fast action card for the PB number. And then anything that requires a random number is I will actually roll two uh, eight-sided or D8 dice. And you pick which color is the tens to do, which is the ones. And so like here you see 38 showing. And, and I do that. So I do a little bit of a mix. Uh, some people like flipping the fast action cards. Some people do not like it. Uh, the jury's out with me. I guess if you have a spouse that would get annoyed by rolling of dice, maybe the fast action cards are good. Um, in any case, um, so that's that. Another unique feature of Status Pro is they have two, two different uh, elements called clutch batting and clutch defense. And generally speaking, these come into play when there's runners on base. And so what happens is if, if, uh, on the, on the fast action card, if a, a BD result or a CD result comes up, 
then uh, in the case of BD, you roll the dice or, or pick a card again, and you go to the bottom of, of the batter's card, and there's a chance he might hit a double, triple, or a home run. Um, if, if a CD comes up, then you have to check uh, the appropriate fielder's uh, clutch defense rating, and there's a chance for, for, for the fielder to make uh, you know, a clutch play, like, like turn double play or what have you. Um, it's, it's a really neat feature. It, in my mind, probably messes up the statistics a little bit. Um, but it's probably a good trade-off. I talked about trade-offs earlier. It's probably a good trade-off. So um, the last thing I think is very cool about SAS Pro is it's an open platform. So you are free to create your own versions of the player cards and so on. And people have done that. Um, I've done that. And, um, you know, you have a whole cottage industry for that. Um, just before we move on, I did a little math just to see what the impact would be of, as to whether you hit the average batter card or the average pitch, pitcher card. And I'm not going to go through all this, but you could end up, if you hit the batter card all the time, the person would hit over 300. And if you hit the pitcher card all the time, um, the batter would probably hit 200 uh, and, and not have any extra base hits because of the pitcher card. So, um, so that's that. Uh, I've got a chart here on what I call status pro features, um, and I'm really referring to the early versions. Most of this has been addressed, but in the very early versions, the original pitcher formulas were just plain wrong, and so they gave the dominant pitchers, the ones with the 2-9 uh, PB rating, they were too strong, and, and conversely, the 2-5 ratings were too weak, but people have come out with formulas uh, to correct that, and that's all been uh, corrected. Some people complain in the original game uh, with fast action cards that um, there's too many catcher putouts and so on. It, it, it's a little distracting, not a big deal. Um, from my perspective, you know, you have to check for errors a lot. So anytime there's a hit off the batter's card, you have to check for errors. And a lot of times when you flip the uh, fast, action, fast action card, um, to see uh, what type of out it is. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but but basically in the lower left-hand corner here, sorry, in the lower left-hand corner here, if, you, if there's an asterisk by, by the, the result, you have to flip another card uh, to see if, if there's an error or not. And you can see up at the top, most of the time it's none, but it's a lot of extra steps and card flipping. Not every not everybody likes that. Um, so um, in the original game there were no left-right splits uh, so that was just handled, handled with a generic adjustment in a third edition. So in that case uh, depending on the, the matchup uh, 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 an out could turn into a single and a, or a single could turn into an out occasionally. And then, you know, it had a very basic stolen base chart instead of the more complex matrices that, that we're familiar with in other games. So um, I'll use a computer analogy. We'll call those, uh, it's not a bug, it's a, it's a feature. So there's a lot of additional resources about Status Pro out there. Uh, there's a, um, a Facebook group for Status Pro Advanced. You can get the, the game in PDF form uh, and some sample cards for free and you can buy other teams. There's a Delphi forum with a thread called Can We Fix Status Pro Baseball? And that's been out there for 20 years. Uh, and then there's many YouTube videos out there uh, and, and blogs uh, about Status Pro. So with that, uh, I just want to talk briefly as we, as we think about it uh, to compare all three of these games. I mean, uh, I'll go to the column here that says playability. Um, my own game uh, with the multiple steps is pretty cumbersome. Uh, I think Stratomatic is good. I think uh, Status Pro is pretty good, but again, lots of um, card flipping and, and so on. Uh, in terms of who determines what type of hit it is, on mine, it's, it's almost entirely the batter. Uh, in Stratomatic, either the pitcher or the batter can have a single, double, triple, or home run. 
Um, and then as we talked, Status Pro has all the extra base hits on the batter's card. But when you think about it, realistically, the pitcher is controlling the, the type of hit because uh, if he has a, a good two, uh, PB rating, uh, like 2-9, he's actually going to control more of, the, more of the outcomes than the batter. We've talked a lot about left-right splits. Uh, mine, mine has the, in, the pitcher influence it, um, but the batter does not. Stratomatic has uh, left-right splits on, on both. And then uh, Status Pro originally didn't have any split adjustments, uh, but, but now, um, now it does, and the advanced game actually has uh, true left-right splits for um, pitchers and batters. Um, in terms of pitcher endurance, I didn't talk about this with my game, but I basically use something similar to Stratomatic, but I've converted um, the point, so-called point of weakness into a batter's faced uh, number. And so I actually accumulate how many batters the person has faced. It's very similar to a pitch count. And then after that, the, the person can become uh, weak. Uh, Stratomatic has an inning-based point of weakness and then Status Pro has that reduction approach, which I think was, was way ahead of its time. Just a few more comparisons. We talked about intentional walks. I've excluded them. I think Stratomatic excludes them. I think in some versions of cards you will buy in Status Pro, uh, they include the intentional walks, which for certain batters and pitchers can, can probably mess things up. Um, hit by pitch, we talked about that a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on it in the interest of time. Statistical precision. Um, you know, if you have three dice, you have 216 chances. I read mine red, white, and blue. But on the other hand, I turn around and convert things to ratings and so on. So the precision kind of gets reduced that way. Um, Stratomatic, you know, as we said, has the 216 possibilities and another 20 if you do the splits. So lots of precision there. We didn't talk about this, but Status Pro's cards and, ch and so on and charts uh, are basically uh, as if you were rolling, um, I might have said this, they're basically rolling two eight-sided dice. Um, so all the results run from 11 to 88. So there's 64 chances on the pitcher card and 64 chances on the batter card. So arguably, um, slightly less precise. It's kind of a bit of an oddball. You get used to it pretty quick, but when you're designing and, and producing charts, it's sometimes a little hard to, to be as precise as you would like. In terms of statistical accuracy, I'd say mine is fairly good. Uh, I went back and tested a lot of my math from, from 45 years ago, and it, it holds up pretty well. I think Stratomatic is, is well known to be good, and, and I would just call a Status Pro, at least the third edition, good enough. In terms of the character of these games, uh, my game has minimal character. It, it's, it's, in some respects, a bit of a, a science project. Um, I would say the same for Stratomatic as well. I mean, its, it's main feature is that it produces accurate results quickly. Uh, I think there's notable character in the Status Pro game, um, particularly when it comes to these clutch outcomes and, and the wording of some of their special plays. And of course, all these games have different approaches to fielding and stealing and ballpark effects, and that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, comments on statistical accuracy. We've already talked about the trade-off of ease of play and accuracy and realism. I think another important thing to think about is, you know, is the game accurate from an absolute sense or is it a accurate from a relative sense? So what I mean by relative sense is, you know, is, is uh, Sandy Koufax, you know, better than, you know, say Don Gullett in the 70s or 60s. Um, and if the game has that relative accuracy where good players are better than bad players and 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 the absolute accuracy is reasonable then you know that's probably okay i think another important thing to know and i, I just have been reading this book um i was reminded 
even though I've studied statistics, I was reminded that by, by this book Curveball that there is just a lot of natural statistical variability, even when the sample size is high. So a person might be a pure 300 hitter, but just through normal statistical variation, they could, within some amount of reason, come up with a 280 result or a 320 result or, or what have you. And then in terms of, you know, doing your replays, you know, your managerial decisions have a big impact. You know, what lineups you're going to use, um, how you use the bench and bullpen, whether you steal or not, infield in, out, pitch hitting, and so on. I think the other thing that I struggle with is how do you, how do you compare and play games with players from different eras? And some games um, make an attempt at dealing with this, and, and some um, maybe not. But I think most importantly, I have here at the bottom is, is you know this is all a game. It's it's you know you're here to have fun, and so that's my closing remark on that topic. So um, if if you are interested, bear with me here. I recently became aware of a game called Playoff Pitch Baseball, and it takes a unique approach. This is one of the main things I wanted to point out. So you have a pitcher card, which you see here on the left, and you roll two six-sided dice, and add them together, and whatever the result comes out, that tells you where to go on the batter card uh, to, to, again, you roll a ten-sided, or two ten-sided dice, and you determine on the batter's card what the result is. And the major Groupings are wheelhouse, so of course on the batter side, that's where the home runs and triples and doubles are. Patient, so there on the batter's card, you get uh, walks and, and, and maybe some singles and hit by pitches. And then you have the tough section where there's a lot of strikeouts and maybe a few hits. And then the, then you may have the ball, ball in play and there's again, single, double, triple uh, available there. And then if, if there's an out, the, the the, um, you go straight down to the bottom of the chart, you don't even need to roll again, and you know the type of out. And so I just think that is pretty cool. There's also some ballpark effects, um, which basically determine whether, in certain instances, where the ball, whether the ball goes in the wheelhouse or not. Sorry about that. And then this game is designed to be played with either dice or its own version of fast action cards. And I think, to me, the, the real advantage of the fast action cards are in determining runner advancement, which you see near the top of this, as well as um, if there's a defense check, it's easier to check on the uh, outcome of the defense check, whether there's an error or not, and, and what happens, rather than flipping over to different charts. Um, I find this game interesting. I've bought a copy of it. Uh, used from someone. I played a few games with it already. I think I like the batter pitcher interaction. I don't necessarily like having to go to charts to determine base running advancement and errors. So I'm still on the learning curve there. Um, but, but I do like it. Um, so there's lots of videos out there. You can watch it and learn how to play, uh, play this game. The only thing I don't know about is whether this game is statistically accurate. I mean, you can see I've done a little analysis of a Steve Carlton card versus a Fergie Jen Jenkins pitcher card. And Steve Carlton this year had a two, two point something ERA. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but um, 2.34. And Fergie Jenkins had a 4.07 ERA. So you can see how these cards are designed. Obviously, Steve Carlton had more tough results and not very many wheelhouse results, whereas Fergie Jenkins had a lot fewer tough results and a lot more wheelhouse results. Interestingly, their patient results were about, were about the same. So that's how this game differentiates. Uh, the other thing it does uh, that I'll point out is it, it only has left-right splits for batters. Uh, which is the opposite of my game, which has left-right splits for pitchers. Um, and that annoys some people. Um, this game is available, um, but at the moment, I don't think you can get the physical cards, but they are beautiful. They're, they're printed on very heavy, glossy stock. And, and, but you can download relatively inexpensively. You can download the game, the instructions, the charts, 
and a sample season, I think it's 1979, and the fast action cards in a big PDF for very inexpensive. So that's payoff pitch. Okay, um, I, I just pointed out here that there's some, some, you know, customization of the batter cards as you would expect. But again, I, I can't attest to the uh, statistical accuracy. Uh, obviously, the relative accuracy is there, but, but absolute, I don't know. So finally, if you're still with me, thank you. Um, we have Sports Illustrated. This was a game that came out in the early 70s. I'm focusing on the 1972 version, which had the 1971 teams. Um, it used three dice, and but it was unique. So one dice was black. It had either a one, two, or three on it. Uh, there were more threes and, and, than twos and more twos than ones. And so there were result, 39 results from 10 to 39. And um, so what you can see here, there's a picture card on the left. Most of the results, are the green ones, just went and referred you over to the batter side. But on the picture, picture chart, there's one, one, one row essentially for each picture. There were typically about 10 pitchers on, on the team card. The yellow boxes are mostly walks. Uh, if there's a blue one, it's a strikeout. And then the red ones uh, are the outs. Uh, they also had uh, pitcher hitting uh, cards, if you will, or, or rows on the charts. And then, um, then you had the batters. And the batters had two rows. One is uh, for versus left-handed pitchers and one's versus right-hand batters. Pitchers. So the splits again are um, are batter determined, not not pitcher. So uh, that would probably annoy some some people. Um, comment I'll make on this game. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's kind of fun to play, and it's another one that if I had owned it early on, I would have probably fallen in love with it and worn out worn out the charts. I've played already um, a game with it just to test it out. It's kind of cool. Uh, similar to Status Pro, there is a person named Randy Cox and maybe others who have taken this game and done a modern analysis of the math behind it and, and updated some of the charts. Similar to Status Pro, the batter charts probably were better than the pitcher ones, but the splits were, were done very generically, kind of like my original game. And um, th those obviously are able to be customized now if you have... Uh, split data which I get from from baseballreference.com and there's just a lot of other ways you can you can improve it in fact I've spent last night and, and part of uh, today building my own spreadsheet just to try to see if I could create these these cards uh, these batter charts uh, I will say I learned a lot I got some comfort that that the statistics are at least directionally accurate especially in the newer charts but um, the precision is really tough there. Um, it's really hard to, to shave down some of these rare results uh, and get, get them uh, within the, the right level of precision. Um, but but it's, it's doable. It's interesting the way the dice work is um, the rolls in the mid-30s come up the most common. And then um, the ones in the mid 20s has come up pretty common as well, but the ones on the left side of the chart are less common. So like the 10, there's only two out of 216 uh, rolls that come up 10 or two possibilities, and, and like the 19 only comes up once. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, something like a 34 or 35 or one of those might come up, you know, 18 times out of 216. So... Um, the charts are pretty cool. They're colorful. Um, they gave you a lot of players. You know, they gave you about 10 pitchers and 15 batters, uh, which is pretty cool. Stratomatic, I think, basically gives you uh, maybe 20 players in the, in the basic allotment, uh, seven pitchers and 13 batters. And then if you buy the extra cards, you get two more pitchers and two more batters. Um, here, here it's all there, which is pretty good. It had a pretty simple... Um, Bunting rating, which is these stars that you were either red or green, so you were either better or not, not, not so good at bunting. And then within the stars, there was a little number, which is your running rating. 
which was used both for base stealing and, and for uh, taking extra bases. Uh, it's kind of an interesting game. This, this, this um, game has its own Facebook page as well, which I've been spending time on. Um, the, the charts are generally available, either scanned or the updated charts are available uh, in Excel format. So you can easily um, get this game. I made my own version of, of the dice, which wasn't too difficult, but I also have an Excel uh, spreadsheet that has a tab that every time you hit F9, it rolls, rolls the dice and produces the correct random outcome. So um, again, this is, a, this is a big world of baseball simulations. Uh, this, this video is already 50 minutes long, so I apologize. I hope you found it interesting. I, I definitely would like to interact with you if you want to talk about anything uh, that I've mentioned or if um, you want to correct anything I've said that is wrong or you just want to learn more about any of these games that I've talked about. With that, I'm going to sign off and thank you very much.